Hi everyone, I thought I'd take the opportunity today to show you my recent find, an Olivetti Lettera 32 uh, typewriter uh, in a very amazing and incredible condition, and which is the reason why I'm making the video today. Uh, this machine was designed by Marcello Nizzoli. He was an Italian artist, graphic designer, industrial and graphic designer and architect. And he was uh, the chief uh, designer for Olivetti uh, way back in the, the late 50s, 60s, might even been sooner than that. He designed the Olivetti Letter 22, which I'll show you later. And this is another, the next model up from that one. And uh, as you can see, I managed to acquire this on Monday. Uh, pristine machine with its brochure, still intact, little fold up brochure there. But the incredible thing about this machine is that it dates, I think, from about 1970. It has a serial number of 03019.05, which puts it around 70, 71. Uh, so that's about 50 years old. But what's incredible is, as you can see, is it still retains all the original packing um, that was put in place by the factory um, to prevent it from damage in, in transit. And so all these pieces you can see, this rubber sleeve here on the carriage lever here, there's a plastic piece in place here which keeps the paper bell uh, off the platen. Um, on the other side, I'll just turn it around, you can see down here on the side, again, uh, some sort of pla plastic packaging that retains uh, the carriage or stops the carriage from moving in transit and protects it. And inside, what looks unusual is this paper uh, stuffed inside the segment. And when you remove it, you can see that this is actually antioxidant paper. Um, you can still see Barcelona here because this machine, unlike other Olivetti's in, um, in Europe, which were made in Ivrea in Italy, this particular one is made in Spain, in Barcelona. And if I just turn it round, so they have a, a factory plant there. You can see the label there. Uh, which is made by Olivetti in Spain. So that would have been made in Barcelona. And the evidence clearly you can see is the paper producer was from Barcelona. And this antioxidant um, paper is to prevent the segment inside from rusting up. Because apparently uh, I've been told by uh, a collector that the metal in the 70s was prone a little bit to rusting. But I think you can see there that that has kept it in absolutely pristine condition. I'll just take the ribbon cover off so that you can see inside and it, this just pops off like that and again you can see it's in absolutely beautiful pristine condition and the reason I'm making the, the video is that you know for some people that collect machines like this there could be an argument for leave it as it is and don't unpack it because it's more valuable like that but I didn't buy it for that reason I bought it because I want to use it and compare it to my letter 22 so I wanted to keep a record or make a record of the removal of these parts um, so that you know it's kept for posterity uh, it's very very unusual and rare I think to find a machine like this that hasn't been used now when I picked it up um, it was in its original case which I'll show you at the end which again is in immaculate condition but it did come fitted um, with a uh, I guess what would have been a test ribbon at that time and this particular letter has the style where you have the screw on um, ribbon nuts here, which often get uh, lost from the spool. So they're, they're the original. It was a little bit dusty on the inside. And what I've done is I've advanced some of the ribbon on and rolled it back into itself. I haven't typed anything on it because everything is fitted in place. The paper bell, um, you can see here, there's the lever here. Uh, oh, no, that's not the lever. Um, I think you just lift it up actually. The paper bell was in place with the rollers to one side um, and you can see this yellow plastic piece here um, I think helps, I don't know if it keeps the, the bail off but not sure what its function is down there. Um, you can see the plastic extends into that section there so I'll be removing that later. Um, with regard to the platen, uh, the release lever here for the platen you can see it's spinning beautifully you will notice some marks here on here and here and then again i think there and um i thought that um these the release had been left so that 
the feed rollers underneath weren't sitting on the platen, but I think these marks show that they clearly were. But I have gently fed a piece of paper into the back. The feed feels really nice, so um, I'm pretty confident that the feed rollers behind it aren't too flattened uh, because they've been sat in, in that position with the pressure on. Um, but apart from that, the platen is completely unmarked. Um, it's got a, it's hard, um, but it's got a slight rubbery feel to it, so it, it feels grippy. So I think again, the platen is in amazing condition, and it doesn't have the, you know, the grooves that you would normally see from constant typing on it. So, you know, I literally will be probably the first owner to have typed on this machine. Um, this is called a basket shift, and I won't shift it at the moment with the the keys. Um, but unlike a carriage shift where the carriage comes up and down for the upper and lower case, it's just this basket segment area that raises and lowers. Um, but I haven't tried doing that because I think maybe that's possibly what that's holding in place. I did find loose in the case um, later on after I first picked it up, this tiny, tiny bolt. And you can see here, um, let's try and focus that. There's no drive on the top of that head. It, this, it's completely flat so I suspect that that was held in place in some way on the machine to, to stop something moving uh, it just dropped out of the machine so I'm confident it's not part of the main mechanisms because you know you would have something to fit that in it's a round head uh, so it's not like a, a bolt as such so I'm curious to know if anybody knows what that's for that would be really good um, finally this piece here um, was sat on top like that but I'm not entirely confit. It doesn't snap or fit into place anywhere. Uh, it, it's not obvious to me exactly where it fits. And it, I mean, it could be there. Uh, that fits quite well. So um, I'm not sure. But it was just sitting in the top. So that's an interesting piece there. You can see the shape of it. And obviously, I will keep all of these pieces uh, that I removed from the, the machine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause while I... Uh, try and take out some of these pieces and show you what it looks like. So here's the first piece I'm going to try and remove. I just slightly wiggled it and it feels like it's it just is slotted in. So I'm just sliding that out now. It, there's a bit of resistance on it. And it, it seems to be covered in a... Oh, it's quite long there. So it's got some kind of... Ugh, yeah, sort of greasy, sticky oil on it um, so that piece came out very easily I have to wipe that down later so if we look under there that's probably part of the carriage under there so that light dusting of uh, or dusting like smear of grease not sure if I'm going to need to clean that off later so I'll just spin it round let's take a look at the other side so here we are on this big piece here I suspect should be exactly the same so I'm just going to hold it while I Whoops. Oh, interesting. Ah, carriage has already come out. That's interesting. Well, that's one way of removing it. So again, quite a long piece there. So I thought the carriage lock might have been on, but so clearly that was holding the carriage in. Now that piece is removed, um, this handle here in transit, uh, this was one of the design features that's different from the Olivetti um, 22 because the lever there when you fold it back sits up here and I think that interferes with the case a little bit but you can hear they designed it so that it would go below the, the level of the case and I guess this stickiness here this should just lift up but oh that's good yeah I was worried a little bit that yeah that it might have stuck to the side but it's okay on earlier models of the Lettera and some uh, the ones built in Italy these pieces on each end are actually metal rather than plastic um, so there were some clear changes in design now looking at this rubber this seems to be some kind of uh, that looks like that might peel off so I think what I'm going to do is take a little knife and just gently score that and peel that back so we'll pause there for a moment while I do that should I cut back do you think I should use a little knife? so I've decided to use scissors rather than a knife because I don't want to scratch the lever in any way um, so very gently, I can feel this edge is quite brittle here. So I think what I'm going to do is just gently try not to stab it. There we go. Just cut. Oh, that's coming off quite nicely. So I'm just going to peel that back. Ooh, it's, it's quite gummy and sticky and brittle. Yeah, so I think 
I'm hoping that will peel off. Yeah, that's peeling off all in one go. Um, I won't be keeping that for posterity. So that's come off. And I think, although it's a bit sticky there, I'm sure I can clean that off quite nicely on there. So the lever mechanism just... If you look on the top here, you'll notice it's a bit... There's a bit gummy there. So I'll clean that up later. And you can see it would normally fold back like that. Down there in place. So... It's a bit mucky with this sticky stuff, but I'll put something on very gently to clean that off. So that's come off quite nicely. And I suspect, ooh, my fingers are a little bit sticky there, that the final piece is this yellow piece here. Um, and I'm not really, I'm sure it's to protect the basket here from moving up and down. So I'm assuming, let's see if I can give it a gentle tug or pull. Oh, I can see, I don't know if you can see, I'll turn it round. Underneath there, you can see where the plastic fits in. Behind there is a little tab, so I think maybe just lift it out. I think it's coming. Oh, there we go. Ah, oh, so you can see that's the, the shape. There was definitely something locking it in place there. Um, I'm sure if I had to snap that back in place, that would go in the same place there, so... Uh, put that away so from what I can see I suspect that that's all the pieces that came with it removed um, I'm just going to move the carriage along now just to see what the feed rollers are like oh it's got a very uh, oh, oh, the, one thing I can show you is if you look down here there's quite a lot of grease inside there from those um, well, these pieces that were fitted in the side and I think what I'm going to do is I don't want to keep running that too much of that up and down so I'm just going to gently wipe that off uh, and give that a clean so again I'll pause the video while I just remove a little bit of that grease okay so what I have here are some alcohol tupfer which are basically alcohol wipes which you can use if you test your skin for blood uh, if you're doing blood tests for you know any kind of test to disinfect the skin and I thought I'm going to use this because the um, alcohol vibe, uh, evaporates really quickly and I've just taken one slide to it you can see it's very thick sticky uh, grease there so I'm just applying it a little bit on here just to wipe and take some of that excess off off that rail because you know whilst it needs lubrication I'm pretty sure it doesn't need that much I'm just going to move to the opposite side and take some of that excess off look that's a lot of uh, grease on there and I'm pretty convinced that it's not meant to have that much on it um, I just need to give that one more quick wipe and let's try that on the other side now and again wow you can see on that side there's a lot of it and uh, typewriters don't need a lot of um, they certainly don't need grease like this uh, they just need very, very light oiling um, on the rails. And I'm pretty confident that that is just way too much grease to have on the machine. So I'm just going to take that excess off. Now, of course, if I'm wrong in this, you can, um, by all means, people can give, put the comments in. Um, but... Uh, if it needs grease, I can always put grease back on it, but I really don't want that running all the way up and down that carriage and making a bit of a mess. I think we'll just do it that way. Just using an old rag now, just to wipe it down. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'll just take it off the inside as well. <laughs> you can see the draw band there with the mainspring all in beautiful perfect condition and uh, so I'm just going to spin the machine around now and just get it back that right way just check it again once more take some of the excess off you just see a tiny little bit at the top end there I just can't reach it oops Yeah, just caught a big blob of it there. So, 
Now the thing about having too much grease or too much oil in the carriage is that it will just attract dust which will then eventually clog the machine up which is not a good thing. But that feels very nice and smooth. Give it a little bit of a motion here. So here you can have a look at one of the feed rollers down here. If we just try to go in close. So when I'm turning it around in profile I can see here's yeah the feed rollers are nice and round I can see where maybe there's a mark there where it's been sitting but they're definitely not flat and even though it's got a slight mark there so I'm really really happy to see that a little bit of grease underneath there too I might not take all of it off I'll just take a bit off with my finger but there is look at that there's a lot of grease underneath there and uh I just want to take the excess off. Oops. It's a shame that um, there was there were no sort of instructions about what to do um, oops, when you uh, first get your machine home about removing all these. I think a lot of machines would have been set up by technicians or somebody in an office or some sort of guidance on what to, to do when you unpack your machine. Um, but I'm confident that what I'm doing is correct in taking the excess off. Again, I'm open to any comments, so if I'm doing the right thing or the wrong thing, please tell me. But yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with that. I'll probably have a little look at it again afterwards. But the key thing now is let's see what the machine's like in operation. Whoops. Everything seems to be functioning quite well at the moment. Uh, yeah, it's working nicely. It's very, oh, very, the bell is, is notoriously very quiet on these machines. Let's feed a bit of paper in and just see how it feeds and how it goes at the moment. So you can see it feeds. That's so lovely and smooth there. That's really nice. You tend to release the paper, center it up. Let's put the, you see we've got the, this shape is a V shape on the letter letter 32. Uh, we have two separate ones on there. So I think that's set up. We've got spacing here. Uh, let's put it on, on the middle setting there. Oops, oops. Right, now I might take it off the turntable. I don't think typing it whilst it's moving. That's a very good thing to do. So let's have a quick go. Ooh, nice and snappy. So you can see there, oops. Can't wait, that's what I'm looking for. So even with this old um, ribbon, this is a 50 year old ribbon, it's still a little bit inky. Uh, Let's just try again. Uh, let's try the red. So down here on the right hand side, you'll see is the lever, the blue on the top for black, white for stencils and red for the red ink. Let's see what the red ink's like. Oops, typo. Boy, that was me. Uh, oh, that's a tab. <laughs> So, as you can see, I'm absolutely not a typist, and I'm one of these people who hunt and peck the keys, um, but I'm really pleased to see that that's working well. One of the tests you can always do on alignment is to type the letter H H H. There you go, uppercase, lowercase, and you can see the alignment is absolutely perfect on this machine. It's very light and snappy. Um, it's well known, this letter, for having a very, very thin space key, uh, space bar at the bottom, as you can notice there. And so some people like that, some people don't like that, but I think it's really cool. Uh, I just like the whole design of it. It's a very, very neat design. Let's put the ribbon cover back on. That just slots. Oops very gently this machine does have touch control so you can adjust it to your own
personal touch whether you like if you type in heavy way or a, or not so heavy um, oops I literally cannot I've just called it an Olivetti letter of 31 but I think you get the idea it's working really nice I've got new ribbons that I can put in that will be a uh, uh, a nicer sharper color um, but overall I'm really really pleased and impressed with that uh, it seems to unpack really nicely just got to clean that sticky bit up and finally I just want to show you um, the case uh, these cases are notorious I'm really surprised because for the design of the machine which was beautiful this is the case it's got a very nice uh, handle with the Olivetti logo on it and um, zippered all the way around as you can see um, stupidly when I bought it I was on a train and I probably should have put it in a bag because the slight little scratches on the bottom are where I put it back on the ground which was a bit gravelly not very clever um, but the case is in fantastic condition uh, they tend to get um, it's the stitching and the zips break on the side which is a real shame uh, but inside uh, the case was made in Spain it's labeled as such uh, in there all in lowercase which is quite cool uh, it's clean uh, a lot of them get very damaged but you, there are some slight blemishes from age from just sitting there and particularly in these corners um, I don't know if that's maybe from the grease emanating off I don't know fumes but on both sides uh, the grease I think has affected uh, that side but overall very very clean case which I'm super happy about so I'm just going to put side by side this letter next to my letter 22 so finally you can see a quick comparison of the two machines so what you can see here now is both machines together the letter of 32 on the left is about one centimeter taller it doesn't look it but I've I measured it at this point so this is a little bit taller I can't remember what the difference is in weight very subtle difference in colours. This has a really lovely crinkle finish to it on the paintwork. And this one is just a flat colour here. Uh, and both these machines don't have logos in the corners here, like some of the other machines do. Uh, still again, basket um, carriage on this one. Not basket, basket shift. Uh, nice. So you can see uh, we've got nice black round keys on this letter of 22. And over here, square, uh, sort of flat keys there. So there's not much difference. They both have tab functions. Um, and I'm not going to do a big comparison on, on both. Just wanted you to see them side by side. But um, thank you for watching. Uh, that's the end of my video. This is the letter 22. And on the left over there, we've got the letter 32 from 1970. Now unpacked and ready to use. So I hope you enjoyed that.